Today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. I want to thank the good people over at Black Gold for the generous donate, donation of all this beautiful black cow cow manure that uh, we use in our video today. And uh, it's made a tremendous success in our garden. I've been using black cow for uh, many years, ever since 1980, and it's always made a tremendous difference in my garden. And I've been very pleased with our product. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Black Gold, for sponsoring our channel. Well, good morning, friends. Today we're going to grow some romaine lettuce together. This is a red romaine variety called Sparks. We'll be right back after the break. We'll grow this together. <music> Okay, welcome back. I got the uh, seed tray ready to go so we can uh, get this thing moistened up, pre-moistened, which will get this little rascal ready. Put a little water in there. Y'all have all seen me do this before, so this ain't nothing new to you. There we go. Now I'll tamp this down. That mashes out all that air, see, and nice and tight. You don't want any air in that seed mix because if you get full of air like that, then it'll uh, be difficult to germinate, if at all, and um, cause your seeds to rot. So get that air out of there. Now here's what the, um, the seeds are that we got. We got them from johnnyseed.com. So if you want to get some of these seeds, go on their website and check it out. This one, this variety is called Sparks, S-P-A-R-X, Sparks. Now, this time when I did these, I got the pelleted seeds. I don't know um, if y'all are used to using pelleted seeds. And all it is is the seed is covered in clay and it makes a little ball. And um, it takes a little bit longer to germinate, but uh, really doesn't make much difference. I haven't, I haven't seen the difference. It, I haven't seen it make more than a day or two of difference but as you can see the seeds are um, they're little beads very easy to handle and the reason that I'm going with these pelleted seeds is this lettuce is um, a much bigger lettuce than the little oak leaves or the um, you know the smaller varieties of greens that we usually use and um, I want to get it down to where I have only one seedling per cell because um, these plants are going to get big and I don't want to overcrowd them. And I'll, so what I'll do is I'll put two seeds in each cell and after they get on up, I'll thin them down to where I only have one seedling per cell. So when I do plant them into the containers, I only have one plant per um, container. So these big old pellets, they make it real easy to get in there, see. When you have the little small raw, raw seeds, they're very small and hard, difficult to handle. But these pelleted seeds make uh, the job go a lot faster, much less frustration, and a lot better success. I try to spread them out a little bit when I put them in the cell. So when I come back to thin them out, it's easy to get them. And we'll go through that process together. It don't take long, and we'll do that on you know the same video here. This video, by the way, will be going all the way from seed to harvest. So stick with the video. Don't turn it off. Keep on watching. <laughs> A lot of folks uh, think the video is over after I get through planting something, then they click off and then they done they miss out the main part of the movie <laughs> so keep watching this is a seed all the way to harvest this romaine lettuce is nancy's favorite lettuce it's a dark red lettuce and it's a big old leaf on it and she likes to take these and make um, wraps with it she'll lay that out and uh, put some rice in in the uh, lettuce and then she put a little tiny piece of pork 
or whatever meat that she has left over like from the night before and then she'll put a little bit of kimchi on there or a little bit of whatever she has in the refrigerator and she wraps that up and I always call it her Korean taco because <laughs> that's how it kind of looks to me and it tastes good I've been um, enjoying them with her for ever since we've been married I've never seen nothing like that before I was born down in the south so and everything I ate was you know pretty much <laughs> meat and potatoes you know how us southern boys are but Nancy had a little class to my life a little diversity so anyway here we go we got the seeds in and uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to cover the the seeds with about a quarter of an inch of um, soil mix seed starting mix so you don't you don't want to get it too deep so you only want to get about a quarter of an inch layer of the seed starting mix on here so you don't smother them you get too much on there and then they take forever to germinate and in a lot of cases they won't even germinate because you got them so deep so just a light sprinkling see how i'm doing it not very much all we're really trying to do is get that seed to make a good contact with that soil okay then we pack it down Make sure you squash that air out of there, like we were talking about. See, just takes a minute, so you got to be patient with it. Give it a little love. Get that stuff out of there. Get that air out of there. Now they're nice and tucked in. See. Okay. Next thing I want to do is add just a little bit more water. I don't have to add much this time because remember I already watered that bottom part of the seed cell. Okay, there we go. Then I put me a little name tag in here so I can remember what it is. And we'll get it off into the seed starting rack and get her started. All right, there's Nancy's red romaine lettuce in the seed starting rack and off and running so we'll be back in the days ahead we're going to give this time to germinate and pop up and we'll take it to the next step and uh, grow this in containers and we'll do all this together so stick with us i'll be right back well good morning friends our sparks green romaine lettuce has been in the seed starting trays for about two weeks they're doing great come on up take a little close look at them you can see that the little seedlings are already up about two inches tall got some really nice true leaves growing out on them now and they're doing really good got a really fantastic germination rate going so i'm really pleased with them i'm going to give these about another couple of days and i'm going to come out here and thin out down to one seedling per cell so when i transplant them into the uh, containers over here they're not crowded um, i really only want one seedling per container if i leave two seedlings in here they end up getting um, you know matted together and they become leggy and i really don't want that i want them to cascade out and do exactly what they're supposed to do so i'm only putting one seedling Per container so let's let these sit out here for about another week and mature I'll get them thinned down here in the next couple days and then we'll get them on the hardening table over here and harden them off for about three days and then we'll uh, get back together with you and we'll transplant these into some containers and get them over on the grow table so we'll see you back soon got a lot ahead of us see you then okay it's time to get these uh seedlings thinned out to where I just have one seedling per cell and it's a very simple process all I do is just take a piece of a pair of scissors instead of coming over to the um, to the cell and trying to pull out one of the seedlings you know by the roots which uh, can be done but I'm always worried about the risk of injuring the roots or damaging the roots to the seedling that's adjacent to it. So I've always found it easier for me to just snip them off and um, get them out of the way. And that way I, I don't run any risk of damaging the roots to the seedling adjacent to it. So what I do is I come to each cell. See the cell, you can see it right there. 
there's six cells here, right? Okay, so I want to come to the most healthiest looking one, which would be this one, which means I take the small one and take him out. Here's another one. They both look about the same. So I like to go ahead and take this one. I got him out. This one, see, I only had one seed germinate, which is the whole reason I put two seeds in each cell. That way I'm pretty good, a little bit better success rate. So now I have three cells with three seedlings. Here's another one. Go ahead and take out the scrawny one. Take out the scrawny one. Take out the scrawny one. There you go. There's a seed pack. There's one pack right there. As you can see, maybe that's easier for you to see. I've taken it out. There's six cells and there's six seedlings. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get the rest of this tray done and all six of these seedlings will be happy as they can be. And we'll let them continue to grow until we get them up big enough to transplant in the container. So well, let's get back to work and get these things done. Well, good morning. Our green romaine and the variety called Sparks is uh, doing beautifully. They've exploded since we uh, thinned them down to one seedling per cell. So come on up and take a little close look at these and you can see they are absolutely gorgeous. They're up about four inches tall now and um, nice and healthy, good and hardened off. So today, the plan for today is we're going to get these things planted into some uh, containers and get them out on Nancy's herb table and get them growing. So let's get started. Okay, we're ready to get started here. First thing I did is I filled up um, my pots with my homemade container mix. And what I'm using today are two gallon buckets for these uh, green romains. And what I did is I drilled some holes in the bottom of the buckets as you can see and then I filled it up with my container mix so I'm about two to three inches from the rim and I use my own homemade uh, container mix so if you want to do some of that and make it up yourself I will put a link on the end of this video on how to our to our video on how to make your own container mix at home now the next step I do is I'm going to add in this blood meal which gives me a source of organic nitrogen and this is a long um, slow release fertilizer it takes about three or four months to be completely devoured by the soil but um, if I put it in now and I wet it down about two percent of this nitrogen will release right now and then it will continue to degrade and break down and release itself into the soil over the next three months so the reason that I put it in now is to give it a little bit of a boost because these uh, seedlings have been in the little seed starting trays for you know three weeks and they're, they're ready for something, some nitrogen. So let's go ahead and put about three tablespoons in each one of these buckets while it's still dry. Once I get the blood meal on the top, I'll, uh, I'll water this in. I deep water it in and I'll let it soak down for about 15 minutes. And that kind of pre-moistens all that container soil that I just made up because it's pretty dry with all that peat in there. So pre-soaking it like this makes it a little easier to, uh, to work with. Okay, so what I do is I flood that little container until I get about two inches of water 
sitting on the top, see? Flood it. Let that soak down. Okay. Let me finish getting the rest of these um, containers soaking. We'll be back in about 15 minutes and we'll take it to the next step. Okay, our pots have soaked down nice and wet. What I do next is I'll take some of my dry container soil and fill this back up a little bit. Right on top of that wet soil, see? Then I want to dig me a hole right in the middle. I'll use, I go from the center of my palm to the tip of my finger. That's it. Then I take some more blood meal, put it right in the hole take out a beautiful little seedling, transplant that little rascal right on in there. I collapse the sides of the hole around it, mash it down, try to squeeze some of the air out. If it needs a little bit more soil, give it a little more. There we go. Okay. You want to do one more together? That one's ready to go. Let's do one more. Okay, here's the pot. Get me some dry soil. Dig my hole. Add the blood meal. Drop in the little seedling, collapse the sides around it, pack it. Packing it's an important step. You want that thing in there nice and tight so it's not laying down on the soil, especially after you water it, which it will do somewhat, but it will stand right back up the next day. So don't get too concerned if you see it lay down when you're trying to water it. The, the good thing about pre-moistening the soil is that um, the bottom 80% of this bucket is already wet and it can wick up a little bit of that. So when we put this on the container table, all we're gonna do is just lightly water around it a little bit to try to keep it from going through too much root shock. Okay, well, let me get the rest of these put in and we'll get them over to the grow table and get them started. Okay, that's 24 of the green romaine on the table, off and running. So we'll uh, be watching the progress of these beautiful ro green romaine lettuce in the days ahead until Nancy comes out here and gives her a whole mess of it and make her some wraps. I look forward to them. So we'll be back in the days ahead to watch the progress of these all the way up to harvest. We'll see you soon. Well, good morning. Our Sparks Green Romaine has uh, been growing for about four and a half weeks. We planted this on September the 29th and today is November the 2nd. So um, it's doing fairly good. Um, the temperatures were unseasonably warm for a couple of weeks there, which kind of stunted them. And I think they're doing a lot better now. The temperatures have finally came into a more seasonable cool weather down here in Florida. So we're down into the 40s at night and um, you know low 70s during the daytime. So that's just right for these romaine. So I took them out from underneath the 40% shade cloth over on the herb table and I got them out here on the three gallon grow tables and to the full direct sun all day. And I think that um, having them out here with the sun on them longer periods of time with the cooler weather, it's gonna really make them jump. So we'll be back in the days ahead and take another look at these as they continue to grow until Nancy comes out and picks some. So we'll be back soon. 
Well, it's been six weeks since the day we planted the seed till today. And our Sparks Green Romaine Lettuce has done beautifully. And uh, it's ready to start harvesting now. And uh, this is the, about the perfect time to start harvesting. And this will get a little bit bigger, but uh, I like to get it before it turns that milky, uh, that milky color when you uh, break off the stems. Right now it's nice and young and tender. When I break off the stem, there's, there's no milk coming out of that right there. That's just clear, and that's the way you want it. Nancy likes to take these things, and she'll lay it in her hand like this and put her some rice in here and um, a little bit of kimchi or a little bit of whatever else you want, and she rolls it up like this and makes herself what I call a, <laughs> a Korean taco. And that's how, that's how she eats it. It's all wrapped up in a wrap like that. So this is some good lettuce. It's got a good taste right now, especially at the, at the size that it's at. And so we're ready to start enjoying this. It grows really great in these containers. These are just two gallon containers. I like to grow it in the container because it's convenient for me to harvest and maintain. It's at a comfortable working level where I don't have to bend over and you know strain my back. It's got it up off the ground so it's not being uh, getting the upsplash from irrigation you know, and or rain. And right now it's pretty clean. So when we harvest this, it really doesn't take much to rinse it off and then get it ready for the supper table. So it's a great lettuce. I hope you enjoyed this journey together with us on growing the Sparks Green Romaine Lettuce. And I hope that our video brought some joy to your day and a smile to your face. So until me and Nancy see you next time, we want to thank the Lord for this great lettuce. By his hands, we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.